So this is uh, Query Inc. at ePaper 2.0. So hi. So what's the latest? This is a beautiful big display. Correct. And good to see you again. Uh, after one year, a lot of improvement. We've gone from 1.3 inch to 9.7 inch panels. We've gone from eight colors to 4,000 colors. Uh, our improvements have been recognized all over the industry. Uh, this year, Lenovo became the first major customer to invest in the company. Lenovo is the biggest laptop manufacturer in the world, right? They are, and they are now on the board of our company. Uh, and that's a, a major um, confirmation of where we are going to go. With this technology, we have today 300 million US dollars in confirmed commitments, uh, largely uh, for education applications, as this is seen as the future for primary and secondary education. These are reflective displays, no blue lights. Ultra long battery. Ultra long battery, video rate, I'd love to have uh, full color. I, I don't want to have any secrets or anything, but I'd love to have a ThinkPad with this display. So, but you're targeting mostly the the what you call it, smart notepad, right? The like tablets. No, we're, we're targeting e education. So it's both tablets and uh, simple uh, laptops for for school use. So the ThinkPad is is high end. We will go there later, but the immediate biggest opportunity in laptops and tablets is really in education, where uh, Bill Gates also mentioned in his annual letter that the big trend that he forgot to notice is that education is completely digitizing. Paper textbooks are going out of business, and that's where we step in. So as the technology matures, we'll go into more high-end markets, such as uh, what you call it, the, the ThinkPad or the iPad space. But for but now, it's education. That, one of the main uh, drivers in my, in my career, for example, has been the One Laptop a Child project, where they wanted to get the laptop to every child in the world, and developing countries, low power, they don't have a lot of power, yes. could be solar powered. Yes. All this is happening now. So the, the social value of, of, of this technology is enormous. Um, there's many emerging markets where there is a high brightness environment. Uh, there is a, a shortage of, of charging points, really. And we can make uh, educational devices for emerging markets that will last a month on a battery charge. One month, battery. Yes. And uh, we're talking about 500 million children. We're talking about maybe it's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's it's a lot of people It's a sizable there. market, yes. Is, is, is a lot of um, potential to make the world a better place. It's the solution for education for emerging markets, yes. And there's a lot of emerging markets to cover for us. Uh, we need to write partners. Uh, we need to invest more. Uh, what you see today is impressive. Uh, we actually uh, still have a while to go. It's so awesome. Like, um, people have been waiting to see this one, right? Yes. The large one. The large we, clear ink. We've always been popular at the at the Display Week show, but this year we've been totally overwhelmed. We have had um, triple bookings, quadruple bookings. CTOs of all major companies take note. Take this, note is like notes there. this is something that we spoke about in the last uh, few sessions, and that we now actually are able to show. There's many non-believers that uh, have been converted this week. So uh, the SID Display Week is seeing is believing, and now we're seeing. So totally can believe it. I think the number of believers has just multiplied by 5x or so. But uh, is, uh, people have been hoping to get these on the market already, right? Uh, yes. How soon How soon is it, How soon is this on the market? So, so our, this one. Our current schedule is to bring Gen 1 products on the market in 2020, mid-2020. 2020? 2020. Yes. By Where? the Olympics. I think it's mid-2020. So... Um, so 9.7 is an important size or? So we're told that the 10 inch range is what's preferred in education for simple textbooks. So the, the typical e-readers, the, the Kindles, uh, are a little bit too small for textbooks. And that's why the first product will be like a 9.7 inch. Is it easy for you to just cut different shapes, bit different sizes, or yeah, like you, you have to re-optimize yeah, everyone like we, crazy? We, we have one customer who's good for the, an initial $100 million in revenue who wants an 8 inch uh, device, and we're designing that. It's a matter of design. And then uh, let's say a device like this is going to be super thin and it's going to have one month's battery. Yes. A super thin device? It's, it's, it's basically like an LCD. 
Yeah, with a lo much longer battery life. And the black and white mode here, how, how good is it too for reading? It exceeds anything that's in the market available today. It's dynamically updatable. It has a better contrast ratio than anything you've ever seen. Oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, so how exciting is it right now to to uh, at clearing in the office? Uh, you should talk to uh, the team. The team is very excited. They have been talking to the heads of uh, display technology at the major electronics companies. Everybody comes to the booth. It really motivates the team. The team believes in the mission, and the mission is to create a class of displays that stands next to LCD and OLED. And this is what's happening here in the technology? This is a simplified explanation of what's happening yeah. here. Cool. So it's so awesome to see it real. It's like a magic a little bit, what's yes. happening. It is magic, yeah. Um, but it's ma magic with a very important social and environmental impact so as well. Similar um, in people are becoming more and more concerned about climate change. If you're concerned about climate change, you do digitize education. This is a Green New Deal display. This is a Green New Deal display as well, yes. This is, uh, should be compulsory. No more uh, uh, wasting of power, you know, these power plants running and running all these displays. It is a, it is a bit sad that we, um, uh, for example, in China, for every year, nine million trees are cut to print textbooks which are obsolete and out of date six months later. And that's about 750 million kilograms of paper. It's really not necessary. There is a solution. So here's the latest uh, clear ink demonstration right here. Full color video. So, hi. Hi, I'm Shri Peruvembas, Chief Marketing Officer for Clearing. I'm very happy to show you the progress Clearing has made in uh, developing its ePaper 2.0 technology. Uh, at the SID's Display Week, we are showing three different uh, demo products. Uh, this is a 9.7 inch display in what we call black and white mode um, to uh, sort of imitate uh, the look and feel of paper. Yeah. So we are showing some educational content here, text. Um, you can see very fast motion. Um, so we are trying to replicate a textbook experience in this particular um, case, mostly for reading purposes. The 9.7 inch display has a contrast of 16 to 1. Uh, we've actually in the lab produced even uh, wider contrast than that. Uh, 227 DPI product driven less than 5 volts and um, 16 levels of gray. So it is in what we call a low power mode. So the uh, frame rate has been deliberately reduced so that we can get uh, much more um, uh, uh, consumption out of this in terms of you know, low power consumption and uh, a longer uh, uh, read times on this display. So one of the things that you'll see is that the white state reflectance on this is probably one of the best in the industry. Actually, it is the best in the industry. Uh, in so it's very white. Industry. It is very white, and the contrast therefore also is excellent. So with the same technology, what we could do is put a color filter and create uh, a color version of this display, which is what the market desires. Now there's a lot of monochrome content for which you can use the exact same color display and um, show black and white content, which is very relevant for different applications. In this case, we are showing reading type applications and educational content. And there were also some images you can see uh, that because it's so fast that you can do cursive writing, you can swipe, you can have drop down menus, all of these things. Uh, and particularly the fine lines, because it's a 227 DPI display, you can get relatively fine lines on this uh, uh, screen. And uh, so you can do cursive writing in pretty much any language that you want. So that is the monochrome version uh, of the product. And here's the exact same display in landscape mode, but it is the color version, the content is in color. So. Here the intent is to take it into applications where they want color and video. Right? So um, with color, you convey a lot more information. 
and uh, particularly in educational settings where you have um, uh, you know much more information in terms of um, uh, describing a, either a particular uh, product or a phenomenon or whatever it is that you're doing that can be much better conveyed with um, colors. You're not looking for 16 million colors, you're looking for this particular uh, device uh, or this display has 4096 colors. Right? That is what uh, is required in the educational environment and that's what this uh, display is created for. And it's still very low power mode. Uh, it's sunlight readable. We're trying to mimic the sun here by shining a lot of light on it. Yeah. There is no um, front light on this particular display. There's obviously no backlight because it's a reflective display technology. And uh, it, it, it has got all the goodness of a typical traditional e-paper, uh, uh, but it also adds color and video to this. Now the color created on this display is um, through a CFA. And so it, it is manufactured in an LCD factory, and um, the, um, we are using probably 80, 90 percent of all the processes in LCD factory. Therefore, uh, it, it is fairly low cost to manufacture a product like this, and it can be brought into the market a little bit sooner than building your own factory and creating uh, exotic processes, which this does not have. This is basically uh, an LCD process for the most is part. Is it full frame rate? Uh, not in this particular demo. This uh, demo also is less than 30 frames per second, but uh, the company has been able to produce 33 frames per second uh, product that has been uh, uh, demonstrated uh, more internally than uh, in uh, external uh, environment. So that's a big screen, 9.7 inch, yeah. e-paper 2.0. It's, yeah. it's, it's a little... That is paper, the paper, paper, paper. Paper. To show it's the next generation of product, um, essentially taking the uh, e-paper 1.0, if you will, uh, including reflective LCD and other e-paper technologies. There were so many different e-paper technologies, right? And this is uh, a step uh, past that in terms of um, uh, color and video. Uh, here, in this particular case, you see in this screen, you, uh, we have a lot of very fine writing, and this is what we expect a typical user case in uh, an education environment where um, you have a whiteboard where the teacher would uh, potentially write either in this case a uh, math formula or uh, you know draw some sketches and things like that and that entire experience is replicated on a little tablet device that each student carries and uh, that's what we're trying to do here. Nice. Now, you're going to have situations where there is not a lot of ambient light yeah. and therefore you would need a front light and here's a front light demo. Uh, the nice thing about reflective display technologies like Clearing's e-paper 2.0 is that you don't need a you don't need a very strong um, uh, front light. You need a very simple front light with very uh, few uh, LEDs to drive it. And uh, because it's front light and not a backlight, there's not a lot of losses uh, in uh, terms of uh, power efficiency. And you only need to use it when there's not enough ambient light. So in bright sunlight or high ambient, you would essentially turn off the front light and you only use it when you need it. And this would be more in terms of uh, reading or using it in uh, at night or, yeah. or in a low ambient kind of condition. So that is what is being demonstrated here with the front light technology. So it's a tuned front light, uh, especially well made for the clearing? Or is yeah. this standard front light technology? or? Um, this particular one is not uh, specifically tuned for uh, clearing as yet, but that is what uh, is in the process right now. But what is nice about this technology is you can tune the front line in such a way that it will take maximum advantage of the TIR structure on top of the display, that's the front plane, and it makes it much more efficient uh, with that particular feature. So um, you said there's a TIR front plane. Uh, so the like the material, what's ha whatever is happening on the screen, is specific. Something yeah. specific is happening. That's a clearing thing. Yeah. So the clearing technology uses only one particle. It's got a black particle uh, that will result in black pixels. The white pixel is pretty much given for free. The, you don't need to move any particles. Um, the light reflects off of the front uh, uh, front surface, which is a microstructured uh, material that uh, that has the total internal reflection feature and that's what creates the uh, white pixels. So with this combination, by introducing a uh, color um, CFA, uh, color filter array, 
you're able to get uh, uh, these 4096 colors which are shown here in this particular class. Nice. Uh, it's just so awesome to see a uh, big clearing display. Um, it's a process that's been going on. Uh, it, it, took a, it took a while to get here, right? Yeah. But, um, display technologies are never easy. And um, this is one of the fastest developments in the display space. Uh, the company uh, has used probably one-tenth of the amount that uh, typically display companies use uh, to produce the technology, and it's been developed much faster than almost anybody else. And the product, uh, and part of the reason is the technology is fairly simple, and it is also a technology that can leverage existing LCD fabs and get it to the market a little bit sooner. And, and there, there's even more optimizations that will be happening, right? Even more uh, color, what's called... Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If you were to talk to our CTO, he's looking at uh, a broadening both the uh, number of colors as well as um, the color gamut uh, in terms of percentage of NTAC. Uh, the work is going on in that area. We will also develop um, uh, you know, more higher resolution displays for certain applications. Right now, it's a 227 DPI display, which is more than ample for the education type of application. But um, for other applications where you need uh, more resolution, that is also possible and that is in the works. And then outside of this, there are non-display uh, items that will um, sort of augment or sort of the ecosystem, which is developing unique drivers for the technology, developing um, uh, newer color filters that is much more tuned to this technology, uh, front lights and touch screens and so on. Those activities are also ongoing in, in parallel. How exciting is it? Uh, um for you, because you 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 are you, you've seen a lot of displays, right? Yeah. And uh, it's it's so exciting to see new technology and what what the potential is, right? Yeah. Well, this is the brightest reflector display uh, to have ever been made, right? And uh, this is also a technology that has all of the goodness of traditional technologies, but brings you an affordable uh, and manufacturable color um, option um, through uh, using an LCD um, uh, color filter. And then uh, it also shows video. Uh, this has been a struggle in the industry to be able to get uh, a higher frame rate so you can either turn the pages faster or drop down menus, internet access, uh, in educational uh, applications. Um, kids want to watch videos of uh, educational content. You consume information much better that way and all of those features make this unique and exciting. And I like all display technologies and this one I'm particularly excited about because it's got these features and benefits that we've been talking about for, you know, probably a couple of decades. Is the dream, is the ultimate dream of kind of like humanity is to have a, a video newspaper, right? Absolutely. So we're pretty close to that, right? And that was the goal. Um, the industry has always been looking to replicate a paper-like experience and um, something that uh, is perfectly visible outdoors in sunlight and something that consumes as little power as possible because paper doesn't consume any power, right? However, it has many advantages over paper, which is, uh, you know, today, um, tens of millions of trees are chopped down just to make textbooks for uh, school children worldwide. Yeah. And you don't have that issue here. Second, there are remote parts of the world where neither teachers um, nor there are universities, uh, you're not able to get um, information to the children there. And this is a way to get um, very high quality content, uh, latest, greatest information. Literally, your video could be watched by a child. My video is going to be okay? <laughs> yes. On this? Yes. But it's 4,000 colors and it's not going to look strange a little bit? Or? Um, well, it is not going to look as vivid as an emissive display. But the idea is, um, you know, it's very unnatural to shine light in your eyes, right? Yeah. And nobody ever told you to look at the sun or look at a bright light. But that's exactly what you're doing when you look at an LCD or OLED screen where there's a light shining in your eyes, right? And, and that has its application yeah. here using them in uh, uh, mobile phones and tablets and so on. But this is for a very different purpose. <laughs> this is for children to read for longer periods of time and for adults that want to read or consume content without having to worry about a light shining in your eyes. There is numerous applications where that feature is very beneficial. Uh, the sunlight readability is a very good uh, opportunity for outdoor type applications, whether it is automotive, whether it is uh, signage and so on. And then there is also this whole aspect of uh, low power. Right? Imagine carrying a device like this 
with uh, an emissive display technology, by lunchtime your battery is going to be out. Whereas with this, you can be um, uh, you can be uh, you know having this uh, product on a single charge that you can use for many days or many weeks or probably in the future uh, a few months. Right? Uh, here's once again the monochrome content on the display. And so when you want to do monochrome mode, yeah. uh, you get m more black and white than compared to the color version of the, right? The no, it's the exact same display. But the color, black and white mode is going to be... The only thing we have done in the black and white mode, and we don't even have to do that for, to realize the black and white content, all we're doing is to get more uh, usage on the single charge, like get it even lower power, we're just reducing the frame rate, right? And that is what is necessary in those type of applications. But you could get the frame rate up and uh, that'll, uh, that, that'll uh, not impact the contrast or the brightness or any of those. How good is the black and white here? How good is uh, the reading experience? Well, you can to... see for yourself. Um, Unless the pro uh, product is actually put into a device and in the market, you, you know, uh, uh, you, until then you wouldn't know the exact studies and uh, and how good the reading experience truly is from a user perspective. But you can read content on this. You can watch videos on this. And uh, isn't it a glossy finish? Shouldn't it be matte or? Yeah, th those options are available depending on the application. If you yeah. are in a reading environment, you would put more like a matte finish or anti. So that's just a, a layer of something. Correct. A film. Correct. A it film is. of something. Yes. For maybe another Loading. provider on the on the on the market, just put a film on it. Correct. As those are very well established. Every d display technology uses those uh, types of uh, options, and we can use the exact same thing. And how low power are we talking? Is not bi stable. Uh, this particular version is not bi-stable. The technology has been demonstrated in a bi-stable mode, but uh, the company is not developing a bi-stable product at this point. Uh, the, the need in the market is a video uh, product, and so it is still significantly lower power than uh, an, an iPad LCD. or something. Yes. Uh, but how about uh, this size device, very thin? What is it, like a weak battery life? or no. um, So if you use it, let's say, for about five hours um, every day in a reading mode, It'll last for a month. And if you use it uh, for five hours every day in a video mode, it'll last for maybe nine or ten days. So it's still very significantly higher. So if you look at a lot of products, they only uh, uh, subscribe to about 30 minutes a day, which is really not uh, um, you know, the user experience we are targeting. So we think five hours a day is pretty normal in a classroom or some other types of applications. In that mode, we, are, we get 10 days with playing video all the time or 30 days uh, in a reading type application. Does it have this thing where uh, it needs to wash itself off the spots or is that just because it's a prototype or? This is a prototype, that's where you see some uh, image artifacts which is pretty typical when you are manufacturing something and you're putting this, assembling something for a show. But uh, um, those are not um, uh, you know, uh, something that is uh, uh, changed with waveform or like that. It, these, these are uh, prototypes and that's all. They would look. But in manufacturing, those are obviously not good. So the white is the whitest in the market? How about the black? Yeah, so um, the, both the white and black, the difference between the two obviously is the contrast. This is one of the highest contrast displays that you find in the market. And, and you can very well see, uh, you know, with this image, uh, you know, words don't describe it, pictures worth a thousand words, and this demo is worth a thousand pictures. So, uh, and there we show a combination of both high contrast as well as uh, fluid motion. Nice.